Marcus Smith, at the moment, is arguably one of the Premiership's best fly halves, but it seems to many that he's nowhere near Eddie Jones' radar. Presumably, because why would anyone be on his radar when George Ford is doing a good enough job for him? Like him or not, George Ford has done a pretty decent job for England. Okay, okay, except the recent Six Nations. But I mean, a Rugby World Cup final, and he's still getting scrubbed? What's the poor guy got to do? Well, that was a short video. Okay, okay. Maybe there's another reason Eddie doesn't use him. Let's look in a little bit more detail. Whether you call it the fly half, the standoff, the 5 eighth, outside half, or first receiver, we can all agree one thing. There's a person wearing a shirt with the number 10, or J if you're proper old school. And that person has quite a big job. Coaches look for a core set of attributes at fly half. And these are as follows. Passing. They need to confidently be able to pass precisely off of both hands, normally at speed. Kicking. They need to be able to kick points from the tee and find touch from a penalty, or even find space where defenders have left it. Decision making. They need to be able to identify where the defence is weakest and exploit that. Or at least understand how to weaken the defence in order to create space. Spatial awareness. Be able to find the space on the pitch to allow their teams to play in the right areas. And defence. Although weaker fly halves tend to be moved out of the defensive set, back row forwards will often use and target the 10 channel to get front foot ball. So a good defence is important to prevent this. Looking at Marcus Smith, he does possess all of these key ingredients to make a great standoff. He has a multitude of passes in his locker, from soft flicks to put a runner through a gap, to the wild 25 metre miss six of your teammates out to put the winger in the corner. He can kick the ball from 22 to 22 and is regularly able to chase and compete for his kicks. He also has a terrifically keen eye for space in the opposition defence. In recent times, Marcus Smith has shown an excellent ability to turn defenders inside out, with both silky footwork and snaky hips, and a keen eye for space resulting in some magnificent tries. It's quite obvious to most that he holds the key to unlock most offences with a degree of ease. It does seem that Marcus may be yet another victim of England's apprenticeship programme. That programme that Eddie Jones introduced to identify new and young talent with the potential to make the leap from club rugby to the international test stage. He has made just the one appearance for England and that was against the Barbarians a game in which he made 75 carry metres and a man of the match medal to boot. Now, it's a fair point that taking on the Barbarians is not what you would call an intense look at a player's ability to perform on the highest stage. But you would think that a man of the match performance against some of the world's best players would at least merit a selection on the bench to look closer. I believe Eddie isn't looking for a fly half that can get to the game line. If he was, he'd be looking for someone similar to Sexton in his prime. Get to the gain line and put a support runner in the hole left by the defender biting in on him. If that was the case, he has that person already, wearing the number 12 jersey, Owen Farrell. Eddie is looking for a general. Someone who can see the opportunities opening up in front of him and quickly identify a three-phase plan to exploit the weakness. This is something George Ford does exceptionally well. Rarely will you see Ford carry the ball himself. Instead, he marshals runners and sets plays around the park to get front foot ball and move the ball further down the field. Eddie is probably looking at Marcus Smith and saying, 
mate. You're not a strong standoff, mate. You're a outside centre, mate. And despite a terrible Australian accent, you can understand why some people might think that. If we compare George Ford and Marcus Smith, you can see some noticeable differences. Here, we look at the 2020 Gallagher Premiership for Marcus Smith and George Ford's England stats from 2019 to April 2021. And whilst there are some similarities between the two, there are some clear and obvious differences. George Ford has scored four tries in the period, whereas Marcus Smith has doubled that tally and scored eight. In run metres, George Ford made 193, whilst Marcus Smith made 346. George Ford made 71 runs compared to Marcus Smith's 68, but was only able to beat 25 defenders, whereas Smith managed 43. George Ford made 452 passes by comparison to Smith, who made just 328. George Ford was able to assist 10 tries and Marcus Smith 12. So at first glance, you could argue that Marcus's skill set lends itself to that of an outside centre. That is until we bring Henry Slade into the equation. Like Smith, Slade managed eight tries over the period from 2019 to 2021. He made 653 run metres and 207 separate runs. He beat 41 defenders and made just 163 passes with 20 try assists. So comparing him to George Ford, it's clear to see Marcus Smith has a different skill set but he also has a different skill set to Henry Slade. It is worth noting that Slade began his career as a fly half, but made the leap to outside centre, where he's thrived ever since. I think it's fair to say that he sits in some form of no man's land between the two positions. Marcus Smith is at a crossroads in his career. He can remain at fly half and carve out an amazing club career at Harlequins with a smattering of internationals. Or he can make a change, switch to outside centre and potentially fit the mould to slot into the distributing midfield Eddie Jones has created. In short, there's nothing wrong with the way Marcus Smith plays. It's just at the moment he doesn't fit the mould Eddie has created for England. 